Welcome back everyone to the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. Uh, you are now looking at the, uh, the dried uh, first piece of veneer that I replaced. And I'll move this over here so you can see. I then was considering uh, about adding some color uh, before a finished coat is applied. Now this looks a little lighter than this. When you're actually uh, right on it, it looks very similar. In fact, if I hide the light, you can see it's a much closer match. But right now, remember, this piece of wood has no varnish uh, or shellac on it, and so that affects the way you see the color. Any of you who've ever had varnish or stain matched, you know what a strange experience it is trying to get that the same. So again, if you look at it in this light without the light hitting it, the color is very similar. My, I'm going to be experimenting to see if, I, if um, I've got the, the little test strip that I did, and I'm going to put a, a little bit of shellac on that. Uh, uh, eventually to see what the final darkness of that looks like. And I'll decide what I want to add, if anything, to this. So again, I'm letting that dry. That uh, I put, this was a Minwax, I think it's a, what is it, a quarter pint or something of uh, Minwax cherry stain. Uh, don't get too hung up on the name cherry. What, you're, what you want to do is match the color. This is mahogany veneer, so you don't have to use the cherry stain just on cherry wood. People sometimes get confused with that. So I thought that I would try to cut out this little um, shape here. So I traced over it with my paper towel and I had this. It was very tiny. And when you have a really tiny piece of veneer, it's not always easy to get results. And so what I ended up with is veneer crumbs. So I'm going to take the advice of one of my viewers who suggests squaring it off. And so I've taken this straight edge and the pen and I've basically traced out uh, almost a square from where the damaged area is. I'm going to try to get this um, cut without damaging it um, and then I'm going to have to lift this up. I need to know that my cuts are deep enough so I don't injure anything else of the old veneer. And then I'm going to get this old stuff up and then I will use that space to trace a square um, which hopefully will be easier to get out of my, my new uh, mahogany veneer. So I'm going to move the camera just a bit because I've got to get in here because uh, you guys are in the way. <laughs> or should I say the camera is in the way. Uh, let's see. That might give you a, a decent view. And I've got my... This is my Ulfa blade knife. I'm always extra careful with these. These are very sharp. And... What I have to do is to be sure that I hold this straight edge. I have got to hold it and not let it move. Because if I do, oh no, what am I doing? If I do let it move, it's going to uh, throw off the, uh, the dimensions of what I'm trying to accomplish here. So let's, we're getting toward the end of the day here, folks. So bear with me because my, the natural light is uh, beginning to fade now that the days are getting shorter. Let's see what I can accomplish with this. Notice I've got to keep that straight edge right there. I don't want it to move and shift. So I'm using it as a guide so I can cut into the old veneer. So far... I really can't tell how far down I have gotten into the wood, or into the, the old veneer, that is. Uh, let's see. And the idea behind this, as my, I think my viewer was trying to suggest, is that if I do this, that it'll be easier to, re to get a, a replacement piece. I might... It may just be dumb luck that I was able to get the other one cut reasonably accurately. Uh, I don't think it's because I approached it with any great skill. It was just a just a luck of the draw there. And this side, this top piece, I got to be careful. I don't want to overscore here. Although I can, I can fix that if I have to. And again, I'm, I'm trying to get down through the veneer to make sure I get all the way down to that next layer of wood. I don't care if I scratch that next layer. A little bit of that's not gonna harm anything. 
being extra careful because these knives are so sharp. Uh, let's see. Make sure I can find the old gro the groove that I made. Now, <clears throat> going to try to eyeball this as best I can. Now I've got my little tracks here for the old veneer, and I want to basically take my my knife, and I'm and I just want to make sure I don't want to make the cut too shallow because if I do, when I go to take the old veneer off, it's not gonna it's probably gonna make a make more of a mess than I've got right now. Again, I've not tried this technique either. I didn't really think about it until the viewer said, hey, why don't you try squaring it off? If I'm, if I'm understanding what they meant. I'm getting a little scratch here. Um, there's probably a way to protect this, but I'm not worried that my restore finish is gonna help me hide that. I'm really mostly concerned with getting this, getting, I don't wanna over, go past my, my square if possible. I'll again, although again, restore finish and my little filler crayons will help me correct that but I want I want these scoring lines to be straight and I don't want to create a mess I want I want a nice clean break for the old uh, veneer oops all right let's see I really can't tell if I've gotten deep enough, but we'll see. Okay, let's see what happens. Do this, I'm doing this very carefully, guys, because I don't want to tear, I don't want to go beyond my cut line, because the whole purpose of this was to get things square, right? So if they're not, I can always come back with the knife and, and rescore to get a little deeper. All right, oh, all right. I'm rather pleased. <laughs> I was able to get the rest of the old stuff up. And as you will recall, remember there's probably some wood dust or whatever, I wanna use my brush. My brush is dry right now. I, I cleaned it off after I finished with the stain. Now, I wanna be sure that there's no oil on there. And I'm gonna get my rubbing alcohol. 99% pure alcohol here. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to make sure that if there's any oils on there, I didn't do the other one, but I want to make sure that I didn't, you know, as I've mentioned many times, glue and paint do not mix with oils or dust or dirt. And any paint, <clears throat> any paint project you've ever had, I promise you that the label likely has on the back, tells you about paint prep. And that's not always fun to read about, but it's very important. Okay. Uh, now, I'm gonna take my next paper towel. Don't really need as much for this one. And I'm going to if this old piece had been perfect when it came off, I could have used it, but it, it split on me and I'm not surprised, no problem. Okay, get my painter's tape out. And basically I'm gonna do what I did over here on this one. Hopefully this one won't be as bad because I have, uh, I've kind of, you know, kind of trued it, um, made it a little simpler piece to cut out. And if I can do that, I may experiment and see if I can get this one to give me two layers, uh, or if two layers will fit in there and still be flush. So either you're gonna have a little bit of a drop in the layer, or it's gonna be too high and you're gonna have the opposite issue. And well, we'll see.
You might be thinking, well, why doesn't he just take a straight edge and measure it? The problem, of course, is that I can't count on the fact that what I cut was totally true, right? It may not be completely a square. Um, you'll notice I'm putting a little tension here onto the paper towel. Make sure, at least down here, it's okay. All right, so I'm going to go back to my earlier technique, right? Here's the... Now... I'm already making an embossing, embossing, embossed area on the area that I can tell where the edge is. This is a lot easier than the other one was because I basically have mostly just straight lines to push against. Now I'll go back with the pencil like I did before. So I'm pushing down and I can tell where the higher level of veneer is for the old the old stuff that's staying, and that's where my little spot is. Oh, not bad. Um, like I say, that one of the keys is making sure that your straight edge, or if you have a, <clears throat> if you have a like a plastic triangle, like an old ge geometry triangle, you can use that too. Okay. Now, notice I want to be real careful when I pull this up. I may want to actually come from this side this time because I don't want to irritate the old uh, veneers and make them unhappy. And cutting this one out will be uh, a, a lot easier and simpler. And I'll just cut on the outside of the line there. And of course, I'm going to take this little traced out piece of piece of paper towel, and I'm going to use that on my um, on my what on my new my new uh, mahogany veneer. One thing I I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys, but the veneers came in a plastic sleeve. When I'm done with this, I'm going to put it back because any moisture that you have in the air could cause these to warp. They need to be kept flat. Um, that's just a good uh, approach to take, I think. Uh, as we all know, wood, wood, wood will absorb moisture, and veneers, you know, they're pretty thin. And you don't want them to curl on you. I've heard of people steaming them to get them flat again, but I, I would rather not create a new project for myself. Okay, uh, let's find, remember, uh, as before, we wanna make sure we're working with the grain of, uh, uh, of the veneer, right? Because that's, we're gonna be putting it in the same grain direction because we don't wanna draw uh, any attention to that if we can help it. So I'm gonna take, take my paper towel cut out. Okay. Now, I'm gonna take a pen and just kinda go down the side here. Actually, I should be using my straight edge. Make, make it easier on me, relatively easier. And watch to see that the paper doesn't move. Not really worried about the ink line. Um, it's, not, it's not completely dark because it's not really the best surface for drawing with a pen. So I know a lot of times you don't want ink to stain your furniture, but I'm not really concerned about that here. It's not gonna be much of an issue. Uh, anything I put on here, stain or solvents, are going to lift, they should be able to lift the ink. So it's not something I'm particularly concerned about. And even, you know, I'm gonna try to use the straight edge of the end of the veneer and see if it works, then I'll know how, how well I cut it, cut it out when I was trying to cut it out straight. Okay, now, <clears throat> I'm gonna save my template there. I'm gonna cut this out and see what we have. And again, if I'm gonna err, I'd rather err on the side of making it a little bigger because I can always trim it. Like many projects such as this, 
you never want to be in a hurry. Being in a hurry uh, generally is, is you're not going to like the results when you're, when you're trying to rush something. Um, now, let's see what I've got. Okay. Well, clearly, I've cut it larger than the hole, and that's okay. Just, just slightly, right? So I've got, and that's, if I were going to choose that I was going to do it some way, that's going to be it. Okay. That's not bad. Uh, it needs to be trimmed here. Now, how much? Sixteenth uh, of an inch, perhaps? I'll start. And I'm not, I know I don't have my straight edge here, so taking the chance that I'm cutting it straight. And, you know, cutting veneers is always a little strange anyway because, because of the way wood uh, reacts when you... Uh, when you cut into it. Now, this is slightly, slightly askew. Hmm. Uh, let's see how we, well, it sort of fits here, but there's still an edge here. I've got a trim down at the bottom. It's not perfectly square, it's close, but you'll know. If you've ever worked a jigsaw puzzle, you know what I'm talking about because the piece fits or it doesn't, one of the two. Okay, that's not bad. Now, this is actually flush. Okay, so I measured the depth of it pretty well. Now, what's interesting is that when I, when I hold this in place and I rub my finger across it, it's flush. So it's very odd, I can't really explain why, because I went down to the wood. It's very possible that the original veneer, um, you know, maybe there was some variation in how thick it was. I don't know how veneers were cut 70 years ago. Um, I'm sure they were really good at what they did. But again, you know, uh, but I'm not worried because those little, those little uh, spaces on either side, I can center it and I will fill those with the, uh, with the fill sticks as they're called. So I'm going to I'm trim. I, I don't even know if there's enough to, to bother trimming. I want to make sure that it's not coming, that it is, when, when it's installed, I want to make sure that it's flush right here. Just slightly off, but I'm not sure it's even enough to, you know, sometimes you have to kind of quit while you're ahead, but let's try it. I'm just going to cut, I mean, just a little bit. Just a shaving of it. Okay. There. There we go. Okay, guys, I'm going to glue this piece down. Thank you to the viewer who made the suggestion. I may not even be doing what you were suggesting, but I like, I like uh, this different approach. Okay, get my, where's my glue? Get my contact cement. And again, just like I did with the larger piece, the contact cement needs to dry. I don't want to try to put stain on it while the contact cement is trying to do its thing because it might, it may not like that. Now, I'm gonna have some openings. That's okay, I like having the space, the freedom to sort of move this around. You gotta work quickly though, because again, the window is very short and it'll, it'll set up on you. Okay making sure that that's nice and flush. Where's my straight edge? Use that. And again, you don't have long. You can't, you can't uh, futz around with it too long or it's going to, it's going to dry in place which is kind of the cool thing about the glue. It's sometimes, you know, you want that. You want it to dry in place. Okay, and same thing I did before, folks. I'm gonna take my little plastic bag and my books, and we're gonna let that sit. Uh, it doesn't take that long to dry. I, I err on the side of caution. I may come back to it in an hour and see, see if it's, uh, I think allowed, would it allow two hours on the other one? Anyway. Um, there you go. We've got the second piece now getting filled in, and it is a little mysterious to me as to why it's flush.
The other piece is slightly below, you can see it over here, slightly below the surface, but if I put another layer up here, it's gonna be above. So we'll see how it turns out. Uh, I'm, I'm confident it's gonna look better than it did, and I'll be curious to see when we're all done what all of you think. Thanks for watching, uh, and uh, I will have another installment or two, a couple, until we're done and we finally get this table uh, ready for the uh, completion of the restore finish and getting the table presentable because the 201 that it holds inside has been restored, reconditioned, and is ready for uh, a new life of sewing. See you soon.